Hey everyone, it's Eric here from i525XL. Today is Friday, March 1st. Wow, we are in March. Not much of a winter this year, not much snow. Everybody's kind of happy about it, but I don't know. I'm, I am and I'm not. It's really not normal. But uh, anyway, 1st of March. Uh, just giving you a quick update on the tank. I do have some pretty cool updates. Uh, the tank itself is doing really well. Um, well, I mean, same as last week, I guess. Uh, you can see my sweeper tentacles are out on the uh, Space Invader again. Um, all the coils are looking pretty healthy. The, this Duncan is looking a little pissy. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if the fish are buzzing around it. But, yeah, usually it's full like these guys. So, it's in the same tank. I looked around, I didn't see any pests around it. So, I'm thinking it's just the fish maybe uh, flying around and... Uh, causing it some grief. Uh, but all the other corals look healthy. Water parameters are good. I'll probably post some here when I take the readings a little later today. Um, apologies, I'm using my Pocket Osmo because my other Sony Arcs is uh, charging. I forgot to charge it. So I don't know what this video in terms of quality is going to look like, but I've got, I'm holding out the uh, orange filter in front of the lens here. So, um, so that 525 Excel is looking really good. I just did a uh, five gallon water change last night. Uh, so I'm doing that twice a week. Um, I think that's really the change that I'm going to hold on to now. Cause I was doing like two gallons a day. It wasn't, I don't think it was very beneficial. So I'm doing five gallons twice a week. Um, just spacing out a couple of days apart. Uh, and it seems to be working fine. So I, I think I'm going to stick to it. Still dosing all free potassium and magnesium as well uh really potassium because i don't think all free has it and magnesium my consumption is a little higher and i like it around between 14 and 15 so that's why i'm dosing that uh, on the other side of the room the seahorse tank i gotta clean the glass a bit a little neglected this week uh but this is doing okay for some reason my skimmer up top there is overflowing all of a sudden don't know why um but those of you that have been running protein skimmers, you know that that usually happens when there's something changed in the water typically. I haven't changed anything, so I'm going to take a look at it, do some readings on this too. Um, I know my water evaporation has been a little higher in the last couple of weeks, so I've been topping off the uh, reservoir there more frequently than normal. So, um, But other than that, I don't know what else is, is going on in here. But, I mean, everything looks okay. Everything looks healthy, so... Not too concerned that way. Um, just I noticed when that overflowed, uh, it actually went down the back of the tank and I had a puddle of water down here. So I need to take a look at that. That kind of surprised me. Um, at first I thought, holy crap, I got a leak somewhere, but it was just the skimmer overflowing. So anyway, uh, so back to what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days. Well, today I will be adding a few things. Um, this guy is the Frostbite Oscillaris. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Uh, it's going to be hard to see a problem. I'll, I'll try and get a better picture when he's in the tank. Uh, so I just got him today, Frostbite Oscillaris. Pretty cool. Uh, I literally just got home from the LFS. So, uh, And then in this bag, I have got uh, Bengai Cardinal, which is going to go in the seahorse tank um, to just hang out with the... Again, I don't know if you could see it hang out with the uh, seahorses. Uh, yeah, there he is. So, so I have that. And then, huh, this in a bag. Here we are. And the smaller bag, I have a forest fire digitata that I'm gonna add to the tank. So those are the three new uh, purchases I did today in terms of livestock. And then I'm going to be swapping out my Neptune Apex on the seahorse tank for this guy, which is the uh, Coral View Hydros. This is the X3, and I'm going to sell off the uh, the Apex on the other tank. It's just, I don't know, kind of wanted to try something new. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do and swap that out, and I'll sell off the, uh, the Apex. Uh, I didn't have it probably maybe a year, if that, uh, but I just thought I'd try something new. Um, Honestly, I, I don't have a reason. That's what it. That's what it is. I wanted to do something new. 
So I'll give it a shot, see how it goes. I'm not going to sell the Apex until I'm convinced of this thing, though. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on today, anyway. Uh, so I wouldn't say a busy day, but I got something to do for the afternoon. Um, I'm going to cut the video off here. I want to get those fish acclimated. And then, um, yeah, I'll join back with you shortly. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, so I finished the acclimation of both fish and the coral. Um, I typically acclimate for an hour um, just to make sure that the salinity level matches the tanks. Uh, my tanks are running 34, 35. A lot of the LFS run lower. Um, so I do give it an hour. Uh, sometimes a little longer depending on the size of the fish. So uh, I've been able to complete that. Um, so I've added the digitata right there. As you can see, it needs about, I think it's a 200 par, uh, roughly. So I might do a separate video on the tank and uh, just show you what my par levels are at, just to give you an idea. Um, but I've put it sort of just a little lower than midway because I keep my radions at about 70% intensity. Um, so I'm going to probably do some readings and maybe adjust some f a few things based on what I find. I haven't done par readings in a while. Um, but I also haven't adjusted my light levels in a bit too. So, uh, so I put the digitata in there and I uh, turned off the pumps for about 20 minutes or so. Just You can see the glue on the bottom of the plug there just to make sure that that sticks. So that's all done. And um, yeah, so that part went well. Now the only thing I didn't do is uh, put the frostbite where I thought I was gonna put it. So you can see him there in the corner. I put him in with the seahorse. Uh, in the seahorse tank only because he's so small and I kind of thought he'd get really picked on uh, I don't want to lose him so I put him in there along with the cardinal who's I guess they're picking their own corners here there he is there just swimming around the back hard to see uh, but they'll come out once uh, once they get used to their surroundings I guess so um, so that's what I ended up doing um, so I put both those tiny guys in there We'll see how it goes. Uh, turn the skimmer back on and it seems to be, I don't know, we'll see. I, I kept it off for 24 hours so we'll see if that levels out now. Uh, it was just driving me, it was just overflowing, it was just really bugging me because there's no change in my parameters. I tested the selenium, it's 34, um, which is normally what I keep it at. So anyway, uh, so I got both fish in there, seahorses don't seem to care one way or another. So. Um, Keep an eye on them for the next couple of days, make sure there's no squabbling, but I don't anticipate any. The cardinals are very docile fish, uh, and they typically can be housed with the seahorse. I'm just not sure about the clown. They can be territorial, as you know, So, uh, but he is very small, so kind of hoping that works out. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I guess that's it for the update today. Um, I haven't installed that X3 yet. I will probably do a separate video on that. Um, I'm not going to do set. I'm not big on setup videos. You can find those all over the place, but I'll let you know how easy or how not easy it was to set up and uh, install. Uh, I'm going to pull down that Apex. I'll probably do it this weekend and then put it up on my marketplace uh, on marketplace to to sell off. Um, I'm going to keep it for a while though, to make sure, just to make sure I like the X3. So um, uh, just one tip, and this is kind of. Well, in my opinion, it's important, right? Um, for the guys that are experienced in, in reefing and, and tanks of any kind, you already know this, but um, when you bring home livestock and you're acclimating them, I would never add the water from the LFS into your tank because you just don't know what you're adding. Uh, there could be anything in there, right? If your tank is stable, um, just acclimate the fish and dump that water out. Um, just put the fish in. Now, <laughs> The flip side to that is uh, I, I don't typically quarantine my fish or corals, uh, which can be a big no-no. Um, I'm trusting the source. I've been dealing with them for a while, so I haven't had an issue. It's not to say that you won't, uh, and it could very well bite me in the butt at any time uh, that I add something without quarantining. Um, but I've never quarantined any of the livestock that I've put in here. Either I've been really, really lucky or uh, the source has been clean. So, um, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues. But 
from adding the water perspective from a foreign source, I would never do that. Uh, I think you run more of a risk of introducing something into that tank um, more than the fish. Usually the fish have some visible signs, not always though. Um, I really look at them closely before I make the purchase. So um, anyway, that, that's what's been working for me. So not to say that it's the right way, but it's, it's what I've been doing. Anyway, um, that's it for me for today. Um, questions or comments, please leave them down below. Always love to hear from you guys. Uh, if you have any thoughts on what I've done here, let me know. Positive or negative, I'm, I'm open to criticism. Always. Uh, I don't delete those comments. So <laughs> this is a, uh, you know, you can be in this hobby for a long time and still learn things. So, um, you know, if you're afraid to learn, then that's a different issue. Um, again, thank you very much for watching, subscribing to the channel. It keeps growing. Don't know why, don't know how, but uh, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I'm happy that people can get something out of these videos, hopefully. So that's really the only reason I'm posting. Uh, so again, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for me today, Friday, March 1st. Um, sounds like it's going to be a fairly warm March here in Toronto, Canada. Very unseasonal. Uh, a little scary in my opinion, but it uh, means I can bring up my uh, 370Z a little earlier, I guess. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I hope you guys have a safe and fantastic weekend. And until we chat again, stay safe and happy reefing. And just a side note, I finally got it right on the fourth try. All right, guys. Take care. Have fun.